So I'm getting to this story finally. It's been on the back burner for a long time. So this story is an interesting one because I want to do it for so long, but I forgot the name of it. And the only reason I remember it at all, like I even found the story, was because I looked back at some readers who the story a little bit recently or a few years back, and I finally found the story. And well, that's why I'm reading it today. Well, I I really enjoyed the story. I like I like the pacing of it. I like how it really kind of gets cringy in a, in a good way though. I find it very fascinating about how you can basically break someone's psyche. It's actually really sad once you think about it. It's even worse when you realize that the person who's supposed to be a higher up is essentially pushing for your suicide and is enjoying it. <laughs> Overall, the story's pretty good, and um, the reason I've been off camera is because my 150th special is coming up. So, yeah, look for that soon. I've worked in prisons for the criminally insane for 10 years now, and I can honestly say I wouldn't change my job for the world. With any hard work, rehabilitation is possible, and I believe true justice can be served. I remember my first day vividly, how terrified I was to do night shifts, how uneasy I got walking that long, dark, silent corridor. That phrase you hear on your first day sticks with you forever. Eyes down, keep right. This is a very old, very small prison, designed for only a few select patients. No doors, no glass, only bars. In fact, the war itself is believed to be haunted. Patients describe a demon who paces back and forth, peering into the cells at night. But this is just what the recruits are told. Now days I can spot which new recruits will stay and which will leave. It intrigues me seeing how fresh new recruits handle certain situations. How passionate they really are to rehabilitating the unspeakable. You'll need that passion I have. I don't want to go into too much detail here to save certain people's dignity. But let's just say I've seen more recruits leave than stay. I'm on a late shift now with just one other officer, flicking through patient files again and again. This is the boring part. I like to put each folder in piles I deem the worst crimes. This has just become second nature to me now. I could show you some files that would easily shatter you as a new recruit. These patients are on my ward. They are extremely fragile, yet incredibly dangerous due to their crimes. If you are going to help them, you can never forget that. I grab the keys and head on down to that infamous long dark corridor, locking myself in. It's unbearably silent and dark, the only light coming from thin slits in each cell. This is the part so many recruits can't handle. The atmosphere is intense, especially an old brick tunnel with a row of caged animals hissing and whimpering. Crying. I keep to the right and set myself on the floor, peering in at the last dark cell. What are these marks you scratched on the walls, Briggs? Why don't you come closer to the bars, officer? I can barely see you lurking in the shadows out there. He whispered this from what sounded like the back of the cell, but I can't be certain. There are only a few patients here, so it's usually quiet and claustrophobic. I'm fine. Are these the names of your victims, Briggs? No response. He's high in some dark corner. All I can see from the light are scratches on the brick walls and his bed. How am I supposed to know how you are if you won't talk? I open his file and start reading some details every now and then. Two children taken from the home at night and drowned. Look what you did to their faces. Do they look familiar now? An abusive family is no excuse. I know what your father did to you. I can hear a slight whimpering coming from the cell, as I recall his childhood. I didn't do anything. But you did. That's why you cry in your sleep. What did they say? We'll be together soon. I watched them for months. His sobbing is getting worse now, and I can hear movement. 
almost as if he is dragging his knees across the cold hard floor from one side of his cell to the other. I feel spiteful now. His voice starting to irritate me. You won't be in heaven though, Briggs. I will! I fell down already! I fell dead that very night! You're not dead, Briggs. Not dead at all. Here. I slide a mirror under his cell to hear his sobbing now become frantic murmurs. He scratches the walls, crying in agony as he spits out his disgusting gibberish. Brian, shut up! Look into it. Look at that face. Bite, Briggs. Bite down your tongue and join them. I turn further away whilst listening to his disgusting gurgling and choking. Listening even harder, I can hear him hissing and cursing through clenched teeth as I read the files faster and faster. I can't. I don't. I don't want to. Yes, you do, Briggs. You almost had it. I gave you a mirror, Briggs. Use that. Silence. After ten grueling minutes, it was all over. I picked up the file and headed back, rattling my baton along the other cells as I left. Oh yes, I wouldn't change my job for the world. <laughs>